Okay guys and welcome back to my creating a 2D game in Java tutorial. Sorry for the long wait but I lost my source code and had to rewrite most of it. Uh, just a quick note, uh, on the image loader class I've missed out the line underneath the image image is GC create graphics blah blah blah. I forgot to actually draw the image. So what you want to add is image draw, get graphics dot draw image and then source the image zero zero and nil which basically just Let's image to the new image. If that makes sense, like it takes the source from your computer and then blitz it into a Java image, so it can be used. <coughs> so that's that. Now we're going to get on. Uh, last time we did the entity class, so that gives us all our like locations of our entities, the images that we're drawing, how fast they move, if they move. If they don't move, then you just don't set a vertical movement, horizontal movement they don't move but if they do then you want to and that's also got the function to draw right so what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, this Apple image which I just got off uh, Google images and we're going to put that in game and make it move so what you want to do is for every en uh, every type of entity you, you really want to make a new class so what I've done is I've started this class here and I'm just going to talk you through it because already typed it to test. So what you want first is to make your class new name. So I'm making it an apple, so I'll call it Apple Entity. Makes perfect sense. And then any entity extends your original class. So that means that even though I've got all this function here, I've also got everything I've got in here. So I've got like the constructor I can use, I can move stuff, I can set movement, I can draw, I can get the X, I can get the Y, I can do collisions, and I can do all that. The abstract function means that I need to redo it in here. Like it, it must be in this class. But uh, I can still use the super. Wait, uh, not the super. I can still use the other Quedsworth. I just need to pass in the entity. But anyway, like I'll I'll go over that later. Anyway, we don't need collisions just now. So I'm just going to show you how to draw your picture, and then you can maybe write your own class. Maybe you want a man or some something to catch apples what I'm going to do in the next tutorial but anyway uh, do you want something so you can create your own entities uh, just to note entities are things that move or are like collidable you don't want to like make background image an entity because then it'll start checking collisions with the background which you don't want it to do at all so <coughs> be uh, careful about that so anyway so what we have is our constructor for the apple entity which we're passing a reference and where we want it to like start position, start X, start Y. Simple enough done. Now when we use the super keyword, what that means is it's calling the super like the super class, which is entity in this case. So when I say super and pass it ref X and Y, what it does is it constructs it using this. So in X Y, we pass X Y in here and it does the whole this sprite and makes the sprite of the entity and it well it does everything in that function. That's easy enough done. Bear in mind that because it's extended it has all these. So when I say X, the X in here, it also has the X here. That, I know that's quite confusing but it's like if you picture an animal so you've got animals and then if you have a dog then the dog can still eat like every other animal. Well I don't think every animal can eat but anyway the dog can still eat and so can but it can also bark. That, that's not a very good explanation. But anyway, and then what I'm doing is just setting the vertical movement to five, like the speed. And then I've written a fall function so that the apple doesn't just stay up. I might uh, do a tutorial on writing a wee bit of physics, since I do physics at school. I might I need to write it myself. But anyway, might do a wee physics tutorial to get things looking a wee bit nicer. But anyway, I'm just falling and passing in a kind of time period that it falls in, which is what you need here, delta, so delta times the speed, divided by a thousand is how many pixels it moves. Um, yeah, that's all you really need. Now to actually implement this, what we do is we go to a game canvas, we'll have an Apple entity, or maybe if we want four we could have an array of Apple entities, or it's up to you, but anyway, we have our Apple entity, and then during game canvas we'll, here, set equal to new one and pass in the reference 
the start location of the Apple entity which uh, that's pretty straightforward if you've got an understanding of Java uh, I'm putting it in the game canvas constructor because it's only this but maybe if you had like a level you would want to load your entities at the start of the level or you could maybe dynamically load them during it but like if I had a level class I might put public level class and then load all my entities so I can use them whenever I wouldn't want them in the actual main canvas themselves but that doesn't matter for now um, yeah so now this is where our update and render comes in so in update we want our apples to fall so if we had an array we would loop the array and make them all fall or whatever so yeah if I write a physics class it might be apple.doPhysics which would do everything like wind or whatever if we've got wind vector maths it would do all that for me but anyway it's just following so apple.fall which calls that there which makes it move simple enough um, and then during the render apple.draw graphics and it's as simple as that now if I run this my apple should be falling down the screen let's see hopefully and there it is if you saw that very well because my screen starts up there I'll load it up again there you go and the apple is falling down the screen and then I can easily just change the stuff so say I want to set the vertical movement to be 10 which that will make it faster so I make it 10 and I load it up again and it moves faster as you can see and that is basically how to make other entities in your game so maybe you want to write a man entity or whatever I'll be writing one as well for the next tutorial uh, as well as going over the collision and the whole if it's at this like as you see if I do it now it's just falling down the bottom what I really want from a game is it to randomize and then your man moves along the screen at the bottom which does our keyboard input as well your man moves along the screen at the bottom and catches the falling apple crap game but it's simple, a good way to learn. Okay, so I'll uh, see you in the next tutorial. Uh, please subscribe. Thank you.